Dream Directors Playhouse. Stars, Bob Hope, Rhonda Fleming. Production, The Great Lover. Director, Alexander Hall. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants. Mildness, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. How'd the billing get that one? By the makers of Anison for the fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, First in television. Tonight, the Screen Directors Playhouse is pleased to present a first in radio comedy. Here is our adaptation of a screen full of laughter named The Great Lover. And here are our stars, Bob Hope and Rhonda Fleming. Once upon a time, Paramount made a picture called The Great Lover. Naturally, they asked me to play the part. (laughs) Crosby was so upset, he fell out of his wheelchair. (laughs) I'm Rhonda Fleming, and I want you to know that Bob was perfectly cast for the part of The Great Lover. His kisses throbbed with a strange electricity. Like a dynamo, huh? Mm Mm-mm. Like a vacuum cleaner. (laughs) Yeah, you're talking to a guy who gets introduced twice. Listen to this from the Rye Crisp Kid. Now here's Chesterfield's answer to Cyrano de Bergerac, Bob Hope. I'd top you easy, Dad, but we only have a minute here to sell Chesterfield. Okay, well, let's get to it. Better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. Mm, The mildness is a cinch to prove. You just make the Chesterfield mildness test. You know, open a pack and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke them, and you'll know that Chesterfields are mild. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So make our cigarette your cigarette. The reasons go together like this. Buy Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfields are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. Oh, ho, open a pack and give them a sniff. Then you'll smoke them. Now here's the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Great Lover, starring Bob Hope and Rhonda Fleming in their original roles of Freddie Hunter at the Duchess Alexandria. Uh, City desk? No, no, no time for lunch. No, I'm I'm tied down. Waiting for Freddie Hunter to come in. Oh, sorry, that's the newspaper business. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, well, uh, here comes Hunter now. Uh, So long. Oh, hiya, Chief. I did it. Good work, Hunter. When Freddie Hunter gets an assignment from the city desk, he really follows through. I got just what you wanted. Well, let's have it. Here. A ham sandwich on rye. (laughs) Where's the pickle? Pickle? Hunter, you know I always want a pickle from the bottom of Bramberg's barrel. Yeah, that barrel you get pickles and I get marinated elbows. (laughs) Gee, boss, how about a real assignment? Look at me. Freddie Hunter, newspaper man, bon vivant, man of the world. I'm too sophisticated for a town like North Zanesville, Ohio. You ought to send me to some glamorous city like Hollywood with all the beautiful stars. Freddie, now, you have to remember that it's the small towns like North Zanesville that are the backbone of America. I know, but in Hollywood, you can see more of it. (laughs) Come on, boss, send me somewhere. Say, wait a minute. Huh? Freddie, how would you like a chance at a big story? How would I... Chief, you're not kidding me. Like the time you gave me a two-story assignment and I had to wash all the windows on the second floor? <laughs> no, that was some... No, no. <laughs> this is on the level, but uh, I don't know if you can handle it. No, Hunter, you get into too much trouble. Like the day you started yelling you had a hot flash. Yeah, hot flash. I sat on a lighted cigarette. <laughs> Remember how I cursed that cigarette? Chesterfield, too. <laughs> 
No, you, you see what I mean, Hunter? Well, believe me, boss, those days are gone forever. Okay, now I'll give you a chance to get out of North Zanesville. Uh, you remember that contest we just had, Keep Our Streets Clean? Oh, you mean the one where I wrote the story from the viewpoint of a horse? <laughs> Yes, yes, I do. Well, that contest was won by the local troop of Boy Foresters of the World. Oh. Whipper Will Patrol. Oh, those Boy Foresters. What a bunch of little sneaks. <laughs> so they turned one little petition into the newspaper. Oh, sure, one little petition. I don't mind that tar, but I'm too ticklish for the feathers. And after all the cigarette butts I picked up off the sidewalk. Now, now, look, Hunter. They won the contest, and the first prize is a trip to the International Roundup in Paris. And you cover the story. I cover... Are you kidding? What time do the boy foresters go to bed? Eight o'clock. They're in bed at eight o'clock, huh? And at 8.30, life, love, and onion soup. <laughs> no, no, no. At uh, 8.30, Betty bye for you, too. The senior boy forester is Stanley Kling. Well, no half-pint boy forester is going to shove Freddie Hunter around. I'll slice him down to a boy gardener. I'll... Did you say Stanley Kling? The publisher's son. Oh, here comes breathless Freddy Hunter making love in short pants. <laughs> the Paris countryside, not even a city. Fine thing. I come all the way to Paris to romance with the mademoiselles, and I get stuck in the country before I can even get a girl to get stuck in the country with. <laughs> and after all those wonderful dreams I had, the Follies Bergere, Paris nightclubs, moonlight nights in the Riviera, Hoping Errol Flynn will forget to close his porthole. <laughs> How about it, honey? You're a girl. You understand. What should I do about it? <laughs> oh, I've already tried that. Hey, Mr. Hunter! All right, Stanley. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> Cute little shave tail. And how I'd love to. <laughs> Newspapers all over. I know. Patrol leader Hunter, take the morning oath. Okay, okay. The boy Forrester is loyal, cheerful, helpful, truthful, brave, and clean. He does not smoke. He does not drink. He does not carouse with girls. He does not drink. <laughs> he does not carouse with girls. If he does, he does not work on my old man's paper. Oh, some trip this is. I wish I was back in Bramberg's pickle barrel. One more week and you will be. Look at this. This is the sort of story I should be working on. Tracking down a criminal. The card table murderer. Imagine catching this guy. He's an American card sharp who deals him so some sucker will win all the money. Then when everybody else goes home, he plays the sucker and wins it all back. Some racket. A couple of suckers got wise, so he killed him. Imagine death at the card table. Stanley, do you play pinochle? <laughs> I know, I know. Look, why don't you go find yourself a girl forester and settle down and raise little pine trees, huh? <laughs> Come on, we got a 40-mile hike to the boat. Your parents weren't boy foresters. <laughs> All right, men. Senior boy forester Stanley will march you to your quarters aboard this ship. What about you? Oh, me? Well, I'll, I'll see about getting the baggage aboard. Yeah? Okay. Company, attention! I happen to hear your uh, conversation. The baggage is already aboard. Shh. This is where I jump ship. I brought these brats to France, but they can go home alone. I'm staying in Paris. 
A boy Forrester doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, he doesn't carouse with women. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's where this boy Forrester burns down a few trees. <laughs> Well, your young charges must have been quite a burden, Mr. Uh... Hunter, Freddie Hunter. Uh, oh. Oops, uh, you, you dropped your newspaper, Mr. Uh... Uh, Dabney. C.J. Dabney. Oh. Well, here you are. So you've got that story marked in pencil, huh? Uh, why, yes. Oh, the card table murder yarn. I'm interested because I'm a newspaper man myself. Oh? Uh-huh. Yes, I was impressed by that story, too. After all, I like to play cards, and, well, one can't be too careful, can one? <laughs> this card table murderer might be aboard this ship. Yeah, but you don't have to worry. He usually picks some guy with hayseed sticking in his hair. Yes, indeed. Uh... <laughs> Do you play cards, Mr. Hunter? Me? <laughs> yeah. All ashore is gone ashore! All ashore is gone ashore! That's the call of the wild. Well, I'm leaving. Oh, what a shame. I thought we might amuse ourselves with a little game of poker. Pardon me. Huh? My dog and I would like to walk by. Dog? Please. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. Young man, please stop biting my daughter's ankle. I was just seeing if her shoelace was untied, that's all. Come, Father. Come, Max. <laughs> yes, enchanting, wasn't she? Did you smell that perfume? A most heady fragrance. Yeah, but the smell is what got me. <laughs> oh, she'll have trouble even being half safe wearing that stuff. <laughs> Imagine what that did to me after smelling boy foresters for a month. <laughs> but I take it you'll stay aboard, Mr. Hunter. Do you think Freddie Hunter's the kind to lose his head over a woman? <laughs> head? Where is it? Where's my head? <laughs> Mr. Hunter, it's on your shoulders. You're standing on your hands. Oh. oh. That man with her was her father, the Grand Duke Maximilian, one of the wealthiest men on the continent, I believe. A Grand Duke yet. He wouldn't let me hold hands with her wolfhound. <laughs> Evidently, they didn't recognize me. However, I do know them, and if you wish, I can arrange an introduction. We can establish contact with a little poker game. Your father, you, myself. I'm going to send a radiogram to my old man. Stanley, you? You heard? Okay, get me fired. I suppose you're perfect. You've never yielded to temptation. A boy forester is perfect. Yeah, but wait till you get to be a man forester. <laughs> it's not so easy. I'll bet once at camp when you thought nobody was looking, you lit the fire with a match. Well, my tinder was damp. <laughs> well, Stanley, my tinder is damp, too. <laughs> Sneaks up on you a little bit. <laughs> I promise I'll be a good boy, Forrester. Ask Mr. Dabney. Of course, my boy. And I can't tell you how pleased I am that you and your chums are aboard. Why, you might even protect us all from the card table murderer. <laughs> Father, I, I do hope that Max will be comfortable. He should be, my dear Alexandria. You tipped the kennel attend with half our remaining funds. Money. We will make much money in America. When we open our perfume shop, we will be rich once again. Beautifully, wonderfully rich. If Americans find your perfume as potent as our family has. Father, did you notice that young man on deck when I passed by? Uh-huh. Our perfume holds an attraction, an allure, a, a fatal fascination. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sure we shall be eminently successful. The 
next time you suffer from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, take Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve those pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Get Anison at any drug counter. Now, Act Two, as the Screen Director's Playhouse presents The Great Lover, starring Bob Hope as Freddie Hunter and Rhonda Fleming as the Duchess Alexandria. Mr. Dabney, mm. when am I going to get to meet the Duchess? These things take time. As I said, I might invite her father to join us in a little poker game. Perhaps that'll break the ice. You just introduced me to the Duchess. You won't have to break it. I'll melt it. <laughs> yes, we'll just play for peanuts, of course. Now, where I come from, we eat the peanuts and play for the shells. <laughs> hey, hey, look. There's her father sitting down at that next table. Yes, indeed. Well, you know him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, perhaps you'd better leave, my boy. I'd like to tell him what an honest, upright young man you are. Well, go ahead. I'll help you. <laughs> Just my luck. Here comes Eisenhower. <laughs> Hello, Stanley. What did I do wrong now? Well, I have to do something. The straps in my garter belt were showing. <laughs> Mr. Hunter, it's been decided that you'll lead us in four laps around the promenade deck. Well, who decided that? We took a vote. The Democratic way. Yeah, I know, and I'm Dewey. <laughs> four laps, or do I wire my old man? Now, remember, Mr. Dabney, fix it with the Grand Duke. Company, about turn. Forward, march. I wouldn't be here if I was hip, hip, hip. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Dabney, I'm afraid to go down those steps into the dining salon. How's my dinner jacket? Exquisite, my boy. And you set it all up for me, huh? Oh, yes. Her father considers himself quite a card player. He's rather interested in you. I'm sorry. Tell him his daughter saw me first. <laughs> I, uh, told him you had millions. Millions? Me? Freddie Hunter? Why'd you tell him that? Why couldn't you have just sold him on my charm, my personality, my savoir-faire, my looks? How many millions did you tell him I had? When you look at the Duchess, couldn't you have millions? Yeah, a million goosebumps. My boy, you must become one of their class. It'll give you time. The Duchess will come to know your finer qualities, perhaps even, even to love you. Uh, shake hands with Rockefeller. <laughs> Alexandria, my dear, a young man has been described to me, dashing debonair, a Greek god. Oh, another American. And rich, fabulously rich, possibly a beggar for our perfume. I'm wearing it tonight. He needs only encouragement. But, Father, what if he bores me? Then I suggest champagne, my dear. <laughs> you know what it does to you? It makes your head spin, your eyes slide up, and your ears ring. Father, I'm a woman, not a pinball machine. (laughs) Ah, there they come now. Oh, no, is that the Greek god? That must be him. He looks more like a Roman candle. (laughs) Ah, good evening, your highness, your grace. May I present my daughter, gentlemen, the Duchess Alexandria, Mr. Dabney? A pleasure. And Mr. Hunter? Oh, hi. We met before, Duchess. Indeed. 
When? I bit you on the ankle, don't you remember? <laughs> it was your perfume. I... <laughs> Pardon me, anybody for bird dogging? Father, I'll need that champagne. <laughs> Toast, my pretty. What shall we drink to? Oh, your perfume. I haven't smelled anything that powerful since Bramberg's pickle barrel. <laughs> oh, it must be the champagne. When I'm like this, I love everybody. <laughs> well, don't love Stanley. He'll make you wear short pants. <laughs> hey, what's happening? Where is everybody? Oh, Father and Mr. Daphne went somewhere to talk, but... We have each other, my Freddy. <laughs> you know, I want to walk in the moonlight with you. Well, I'd rather run. <laughs> but why? I'm in a hurry to get to the next page. <laughs> <laughs> I'll carry your bag and you carry the case of champagne. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are, Duchess. You just take my arm and... Gee, I'm afraid I stepped on your evening gown. Oh, don't be afraid, darling. I have a needle and thread in my cap, and we'll fix it. <laughs> we'll uh, fix it? Oh, but of course. Come. Uh, no, no. It's past taps. <laughs> the boy foresters will worry. They'll put hot rocks in my sleeping bag. <laughs> If I don't show up, Stanley will have me fired. Oh, please. Please? Please. Well, let's get together and baste it on the bias. Well, then quickly, my dearest. Let us go. Well, let's look for that needle, and I hope it's in a haystack. <laughs> Turn on the lights to find the needle. Yeah, let's do it the hard way with gloves on, huh? <laughs> Listen, my nerves are jangling. Oh, my handsome one, the phone is ringing. Yeah. But who would disturb it at this time of night? Yeah, who? Lights, lights. Thank you. Now, answer the phone, my Freddy. Hey, what's the idea of disturbing the Duchess at this time of night? Say, do you know who this is? No, who? Yeah. Do you know who this is? No. Good. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Just a boy Forrester. Boy Forrester? Boy, I'm late for taps. They'll drum me out of the regiment. Please, Freddie, don't go. Please. I'm sorry, Duchess, but I'm leaving. I'm getting out of... Let's go back to page 19. Huh? No, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm staying. <laughs> oh, Duchess, Please. No point. I know where it is. <laughs> Duchess, please, stop waving that perfume atomizer in my face. Oh, that's nothing to worry about, my Freddy. Just let your conscience be your guide. No, that won't work. Why not? It keeps following your conscience. <laughs> Do you really want to kiss me? Well, I didn't put those footprints on the ceiling trying to get out. <laughs> oh, you have such a sense of humor. Huh? I say you have such a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a living. Say, uh... <laughs> take... Take me in your arms, Dush D Duchess. <laughs> Take it again now. I'll take it from where the cops came in. Take me, 
take me in your arms, Duchess. Let me try this line. I think I can handle it. I don't know. <laughs> take me in your arms, girl. <laughs> take me in your arms, girl, Duchess. Crush me. <laughs> Make me know it. I surrender. Don't get much money. <laughs> tell me, Duchess. Duchess, tell me. Does everybody kiss like that in your country? Like how? <laughs> I, I suppose so. Why? Well, where does an alien go to register? <laughs> oh, Freddy, answer the door. Aboard ship yet? Boy, these fuller brush salesmen stop at nothing. <laughs> Stanley. That's when I was building up pressure in my double boiler. Mr. Freddy Hunter, you are observed in the embrace of a woman, not your mother. <laughs> Prepare for court martial. Court martial? Duchess, Alexandria, don't let him take me. Oh, but is it so important? After all, a wealthy man like yourself. What can it matter? Him? Wealthy? <laughs> you ought to see him lick the chopping block at Bramberg's Delicatessen. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, don't try, Duchess. Men, I'm your prisoner. Take me. Company! I'm out! Hey! Hard! Stop! What is it, Hunter? I have one final request to make. Go ahead and make it. One last shot of perfume. Oh, of course, my darling. Ho, 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 ho. Tell him in North Zanesville I died like an Airedale. Help! 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 The great lover continues his romance in just a moment. But first, here's a word from RCA Victor. Fill your life with a new magic world of fun. Enjoy yourself. Have a Highland fling. Yes, that's just what it is when you and your family start enjoying RCA Victor's new 17-inch television console, The Highland. It's fun, it's fine, and it'll be the favorite of your family. That's right. The most famous name in home entertainment, RCA Victor now brings you the best in 17-inch television with a new Highland console. There's a lot we can say about the Highland, but you just have to see it with its remarkable pictures. Clear, bright, and steady. Its distinctive console cabinet, beautifully styled, beautifully finished, and priced to fit your family budget. Then you'll know why this is million-proof television. Now over two million American families have tried, tested, and purchased RCA Victor Television. Let your family in for a Highland fling with RCA Victor's exciting new Highland television console. See it at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse. The Thursday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants, mildness, plus no unpleasant aftertaste, by the makers of Anison for the fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Great Lover, starring Bob Hope and Rhonda Fleming, We'll continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification.
is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of The Great Lover, starring Bob Hope and Rhonda Fleming in their original roles of Freddie Hunter and the Duchess Alexandria. Mr. Hunter. Oh, hi, Mr. Dabney. No, 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 don't get up. I'll just take this other deck chair. I uh, understand that you amused the uh, duckies last night. Yeah, yeah. She's a fast girl with a champagne hammerlock. <laughs> but the boy Forrester spoiled it. What happened? They pulled a raid. They charged me with necking in the third degree. <laughs> well, then things aren't too bad. Now, to further your campaign, I suggest a measure of companionship with the Duchess's father. Okay, but if he wears the same perfume, the deal's off. <laughs> well, I rather thought poker. Poker? Well, we'll expect you at one o'clock in the gaming salon. And, Mr. Hunter, remember, play big, be the big man you are. Yeah, Freddie Hunter, the poker king of North Zanesville. I'm too big to play for matches. From now on, I'm betting cigarette lighters. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Hunter, but I happen to overhear Now, look, bud, you're talking to lucky Freddy Hunter. Name your poison. Cards, dice, hopscotch. Let's see the color of your money. Oh, a piker, huh? Uh, Poker's my game. All right, a poker piker. Lay it on the line, boy. (laughs) Lay it on the line. You're talking to put up or shut up Hunter. Poker's all right with you, then? Never mind the small talk, son. I told you you're talking to put up or shut up Hunter. What are the stakes? Fifty dollars a chip. Yes, sir. Whispering Smith, they call me. <laughs> Just gave up gambling. Well, maybe that's a good policy aboard ship, Mr. Hunter. My name's Higgins. The card table murderer is loose. He may be Dabney. He may be the Duke. Then again, he may be you. So long, Lucky. <laughs> me, the card table murderer. I never murdered a card table in my life. <laughs> Murder? Hey, Mr. Higgins! Good morning, Freddy. Duchess. You're not angry with me, Freddy, are you? About last night? Angry because you drank champagne and hypnotized me with perfume and took me to your cabin and let me kiss you? (laughs) You know, Freddy, at first I didn't like you. And then came the champagne, and I did like you. I really burbled in those bubbles, huh? (laughs) But now the champagne's gone, and I still like you very much. Look, Alexandria... But don't call me Alexandria. Alex? No, Freddy. But that's my name. <laughs> darling. Darling, that sounds good. Good morning, darling. Good morning, honey bunch. <laughs> Stanley. Here, have an ice cube. Why don't you go and have your head blocked? Look, Stanley... The Duchess and I, this is just my way of getting exercise, like you and basketball. Yeah? Well, the minute you start shooting baskets, I start wiring my old man. (laughs) Well, go ahead. By the time you get an answer, the game will be over. (laughs) Stanley, you're you're such a nice little boy, Forrester. Come here. Stop mussing up my merit badges. (laughs) Listen, Duchess, I might be able to handle this little monster. You got a handkerchief with some of that perfume on it? Why, yes, Freddy, right here. Oh, thanks. What are you two plotting about? Ah, oh, nice little Stanley. Come here and let me bash your head in, will you? <laughs> With that handkerchief? Now just take a whiff of the handkerchief when I wave it at you. Okay, cutie, but I'm already dated for tonight. <laughs> Go on, smell. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Say, let me get a whiff. <laughs> It's only a little liquid. Yeah, that's what the guy said when he invented nitroglycerin. (laughs) Give me another shot of that. (laughs) Sure, here. You can use my shaving lotion for a chaser. (laughs) (laughs) Looks like we'll see Stanley in long pants yet. (laughs) Well, it's my turn again. (laughs) Have one with me, will you? Freddie, Freddie, do you you really think it's affecting him? Well, I don't know about him, but my brain is playing taps and my blood is blowing revelry. Hey, Duchess, want to wrestle? (laughs) Duchess, could you ever care 
for a boy, Forrester. You, Stanley? Me, loved one. <laughs> now hold it, Stanley. Quiet, passion flower. <laughs> oh, Stanley, you and I, oh, it can never be. I, I lost my head. Well, take your other one and get out while you're still even. <laughs> Farewell, my lovely. Farewell. Freddy. Freddy, could you ever care for me? You, a, a millionaire? Oh, I'm not so rich. I haven't even got a yacht for my swimming pool. <laughs> oh, kiss me, Freddy. Just once more. Uh-uh. I have to keep a clear head. I've got an appointment with your father and Mr. Dabney. After all, that's much more important than a kiss. Who writes this stuff? <laughs> Let those guys out of the cave, will you? <laughs> okay, men, I'm ready for the big game. Uh, Mr. Hunter, you seem to have made a very favorable impression on my daughter last night. Yeah, and I wasn't even wearing a flower in my hair. Well, shall we proceed with the game, gentlemen? Oh, sure. Go ahead and shuffle. Very well. My uh, fingers are a little stiff, but... Uh... If you're stiff, I'm paralyzed. <laughs> I'll see you later. I'm leaving. <laughs> Don't be upset, Mr. Hunter. We're all men of the world here. Yeah, but I haven't had much experience. I didn't even know what girls were until the day Bramberg's waitress fell into the pickle barrel. Why did you say my aunt? <laughs> just cards, Mr. Hunt. This is cards, Fritz. All right, Dell. Just, just. A... <laughs> well, a guy can get in trouble this way. Mr. Higgins told me. And uh, who is Mr. Higgins? Oh, a fellow I met on the boat. Said even I might be the card table murder. Imagine that, me, a murder. Well, let's play. How much is this chip worth? A hundred dollars. Okay, but a a hundred dollars. What do you take me for, a millionaire? Why, of course, Mr. Hunter. Just throw the chip in the ante. Okay, but you pry it out of my fingers, will you? <laughs> and that gentleman ends the game. Well, I told you boys not to play with me. Now, let's see, Mr. Dabney, you owe $400. I have it right here. <laughs> I told you not to play with me. And here are your winnings, Your Grace. Uh, thank you. And uh, you, Mr. Hunter, owe me exactly $1,600. Well, I haven't got it. I told you not to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> haven't got it? You? Uh, I think Mr. Hunter's forgotten his wallet. I'll be glad to advance the money. Oh, but really? I insist, if Mr. Hunter will permit me. Me? I insist you insist. <laughs> thank you. $1,600. Thank you. Thank you. On to replay this evening, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Oh, fine thing, Dabney. You got me into this mess. Now I owe you $1,600. How am I going to get that kind of money? Commit murder? Oh, I hope murder won't be necessary, my boy. As for your losses, I am responsible, so you owe me nothing. Hmm? Please make me happy. I'm sure you'll win it all back tonight anyway. <laughs> Some deal. Mr. Higgins was right. I shouldn't have played. Mr. Higgins seems to have concerned himself unduly with our gambling activities. I uh, think perhaps we should play somewhere else. I'll arrange for a cabin. Yeah, well, while you're about it, arrange for two. One more lousy hand and I'll settle for a fast game of post office. <laughs> Believe me, my boy, at the end of tonight's game, it is very unlikely that the money will still be in the Duke Maximilian's possession. <laughs> Goodbye, and don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Here I am writing IOUs for my IOUs. <laughs> and what'll the Duchess do if she finds out I'm a phony? Probably cut off my perfume. <laughs> nah, she wouldn't be that cruel. 
Maybe she'll let me taper off one nostril at a time. <laughs> I'll tell her the truth, that I'm a poor but honest newspaper man and I can't afford to buy her mink coats. Of course, I might be able to get her a job as a secretary in the White House or alone with the RFC. <laughs> Didn't. Well, I admit the stakes were a trifle high, my dear, and I did win, you know. But suppose the next time you should lose. To that hunter fellow? <laughs> How can I lose to a man who cuts the cards with his nose? <laughs> the point is that we can't afford to take chances. We have just enough money to start a small perfume business in America. If you lose that, Father, we're, we're finished. I shan't lose, my dear Alexandria. Well, Mr. Hunter, come in. Oh, thanks. I'll just pull up one of the family money bags and sit down. Yes. Well, I imagine it's my daughter you wish to see. I just run along. Hey, Duchess, I happen to hear you scolding your father about gambling. Oh? Well, father must learn not to yield to such a childish temptation. Well, what's the use of having temptations if you don't yield to them? <laughs> I've yelled so much I'm limp. <laughs> Perhaps, Freddie, you're just a, a very human human being. Human enough to know what it's like to be broke. Broke? Broke, an irritating lack of lettuce. No dough, you know, like you and your father. Oh, I see. You heard that, too. Uh-huh. Well, I imagine this will be most important to a man of your wealth. Wealth? Listen, Duchess, my money means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. And you know why? Why? Because I ain't got any. I haven't got change for a bagel. <laughs> oh, this is very funny. What are you breaking yourself up for? <laughs> I was going to borrow $50,000 from you to go into business. <laughs> <laughs> is that the truth? <laughs> what are you laughing at? I was going to lend it to you. <laughs> <laughs> poor Freddy What do you mean, poor Freddy? This is wonderful We're both busted We both start from scratch Without money, can one get along in America? Listen, Duchess I've seen them rich and I've seen them poor And you know the way I feel about it? How? You can't get along without money in America <laughs> Boys, let's deal a little cards, huh? Very well. I'll shuffle. <laughs> now let's hear you play it like a rumba. <laughs> uh, do you feel lucky tonight, Mr. Hunter? Me? Lucky? All I want to do is break even. Okay. There's all the chips in the pot, and I haven't looked at my cards yet. What have you got, Mr. Dabney? Oh, I dropped out, my boy. You're too lucky for me. Well, how about you, Duke? A full house. Three kings and two eights. See, you beat me. All I have is nothing but an old ace and another ace and another ace and another ace and a wild one. <laughs> See, nothing but five aces. Five aces! <laughs> Gentlemen... I am finished. Look, let's split it all up and start again, huh? Certainly not. I believe, Mr. Hunter, that I owe you $27,000. Oh, look, you, you want to settle for 35 cents cash? A gambling <laughs> debt is a debt of honor. I just make out as I owe you. Oh, amazing, isn't it, how one's luck can change? There. My winnings of this afternoon, and then I owe you for the rest. Hey, you know what? I bet you win it all back tomorrow. Mr. Hunter... I believe I had my fill of poker. North Saints will style. Good night. 27 grand. Boy, that'll buy a lot of gumballs. I'll never go hungry again. I'm afraid, my boy, that the Duke is not as gracious a loser as I am. You see, I too seem to have lost all my cash. Not even a little old dollar. Well, what's this? A little old dollar bill, huh? 
Yes, little old orphan bill, you might say. Yeah. Would you care to cut cards to dispose of it, Mr. Hunter? No, no, I don't think so. I just gave up gambling. But little old orphan dollar bill. Ah, uh, funny the way you want to bet that dollar. That's just the way the card table murderer works. Exactly the way, Mr. Hunter. Mr. Higgins, what are you doing here? Is there something you wish, Mr. Higgins? Yes, that money. Look, he's got a gun. Gun? What does a gun do? Shoots. Shoots! Oh! <laughs> Higgins, I'm afraid you've frightened our friend into a faint. Would you kindly explain your business? I'm the ship's detective. May I see those cards, please? Oh, you think perhaps they're marked? Mm-hmm. Why, of course. Look then. Yeah! Oh! Oh! oh. Too bad, Mr. Higgins. And you were so close to your quarry. Oh. Oh. What happened? My boy, he's dead. You displayed the courage of a tiger. Me? A tiger? You. You killed him. What'd I do, claw him to death? (laughs) No, he stood there with his gun. Suddenly an expression of passion darted across your face. That's when I snapped my garter belt. You you threw yourself on him. You bent the gun around and bang. Maybe I can plead self-defense. You can never stand up in court. Neither could I. Let me sit down. Well, I have to phone the captain about this, my boy. I'm sorry. What about my winnings? But you're a doomed man. Remember, honey. Uh... (laughs) But you're a... But you're... Try Duchess. That's good. (laughs) You're doomed. You can't take it with you. Well, I'm sure not going to leave any laying around. There's no time. No time? Hurry. Hurry. Run. Run, run. They're off at Santa Anita. Here I go. Yes, that was a shot. Please inform the captain. I wish to report a murder. The ship's detective, Mr. Higgins, has been shot by a card sharp. Who is it? Stanley, it's me, your old friend, Freddy. Come home to roost. Beat it, barnyard. You ain't getting in this hen house. But, Stanley, I... Don't you know what time it is? The rest of the patrol is sleeping. Look, I'm a boy forester, too. See, I've got the acorn mark on my wrist. I don't care if you got chestnuts going out of your ears. You ain't getting in. Now, listen, turnip head, don't take advantage of your size. If you were a foot shorter, I'd let you have it. <laughs> Mr. Hunter, I'd like a word with you. Duchess, I'm in trouble. You know what happened? I do. My father told me what happened. Your fabulous luck. You cheated him. You took his I.O.U. Thief. Liar. Cheat. He finally knows you, eh, Hunter? Duchess, I'm not a cheat. Then what are you? I'm just a murderer. Murderer? I knew it the minute I laid eyes on him. Hey, men, get up. We're going to hang Mr. Hunter. (laughs) There's the alarm. They're looking for me. Duchess, you have to help me. Where can I hide? Mr. Hunter, let them track you down like the hound you are. No, I'm too young for the dog pound. Dog pound. Dog. Ho, 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 ho. Shut up, you crummy wolfhound. Some kennel you've got here. Next time, try the train. It's air conditioned. Oh, I'm sorry. Nothing personal. After all, who can be dainty in a boneyard? You got any meat left on these things? When do we eat? Uh Uh-oh, here comes the gravy train. Come on, put something in the kennel, boy. A dog biscuit. I got it first, finders keepers. Let go, you want to ruin your figure? You look like a St. Bernard. Ouch! Max, are you all right? The Duchess. Here, 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 let me feel your head. Why, Max, how strange you feel. 
It's not like a dog's head at all. It's more like an ape. (laughs) (laughs) Max, you, you bit me. Oh, now you're licking my hand. <laughs> oh, Max, your lips feel just like Freddy's. Oh. Oh. No, I, I think I loved him. Oh. Oh. If only, if only there was some explanation. Oh, oh. There is. Is there? Max, you talked! <laughs> yeah, I wasn't just a woofing either. Look, Duchess. Duchess, you have to believe me. I... Uh-oh, I'm trapped. I ain't a boy, Forrester, for nothing, Mrs. Dabney. I can follow a sleuth with Freddy's trail with my eyes shut. Well, then where is he, my boy? Oh, good evening, Duchess. Good evening, Mr. Dabney. There's only one place he could be, in that kennel. Well, Duchess, is Mr. Hunter in that kennel? Oh, 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 oh. No, just my dog. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. His voice seems to be changing. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Stanley, my boy, we seem to have found our man. You run along and get the rest of the patrol. You double-crossing heel, whose side are you on? Why, Mr. Hunter, I'm on Mr. Dabney's side, as this gun will well inform you. Oh, Mr. Dabney, don't shoot him. Even though I know what he is, I... Please don't. Oh, but I must. Oh, she loves me. Okay, Dabney, go ahead and shoot. Wait a minute, who put this line in the script? (laughs) That writer's been trying to kill me off for years. Your jokes are of no avail, Mr. Hunter. You see, you must die. And the Duchess, too. The Duchess? No, take me, but not her. Don't shoot her. Freddy, stop trying to hide behind me. (laughs) Well, Mr. Dabney, why do you feel this sudden need for murder? Because the card table murderer must continue to exist, my dear. You. Then it was you who shot Mr. Higgins. And cheated my father. Don't be tedious. Soon the boy foresters must return. They must find that Mr. Hunter threw me off balance, knocked the Duchess overboard, and then consigned himself to the comforts of the sea. (laughs) What's the matter with that confounded dog? Well, Mr. Dabney, as long as you're going to kill us, you might as well have a look at this. What is it? Go ahead, take it and see. Give it to me. Why, it's only a dog biscuit. (laughs) Take him away. Get him off me. Okay, Dabney, I've got the gun and Max has got his dog biscuit. You're dealing with a big time now. This is the kid from North Zanesville speaking. So it took a flea-bitten dog to do the trick, huh? He might have had fleas before, Dabney, but not now. Duchess, scratch my back. Oh, Freddy. You were magnificent. I got one more thing to do. You hold the gun on him. Here. I've got it. You got him covered? Yes, darling. What do you want to do? Crawl back into the doghouse. Oh. Oh. My little boy, Forrester. There it is, Duchess. Staten Island Ferry. The end of the voyage. Yeah, I guess this is the finish. It's the perfume business for you and back to North Zanesville for me. Oh, you really think so? Hip! 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 patrol standing by for landing. What are your instructions, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Did you really think I'd let you say goodbye to me, darling? <laughs> now, now, Duchess. That... Du- du- <laughs> are you ready, Mr. Hunter, sir? What'd you say, boy? Are you ready, Mr. Hunter, sir? Just call me Duke.
And so ends the story of the great lover. In just a moment, Bob Hope and Rhonda Fleming will return to introduce this week's guest director. Next Thursday, on the evening of the Academy Award presentation, the Screen Director's Playhouse brings you a program worthy of that great event. We are proud to present two Academy Award nominees, starring in a well-remembered romance. Our story is Next Time We Love, directed by E.H. Griffith. And our stars, James Stewart and Eleanor Parker. And now, here again are tonight's stars, Bob Hope and Rhonda Fleming. Okay, Rhonda, let's get with the director, huh? Isn't that what this is all about? Well, Bob, it's our chance to say thanks to that man behind the camera. But, Bob, I think we should explain about Alexander Hall. All right. Folks, Al Hall directed The Great Lover, but illness has kept him home tonight. So Rhonda and I would like you to meet another great director. This kid didn't bother learning about motion pictures. He just invented them. (laughs) After making about 380 films, he did three pictures with me. That's when he went into the fruit and vegetable business. (laughs) Oh, he didn't either. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the man who directed Bob in The Ghost Breakers, Monsieur Bocquer, and Fancy Pants, George Marshall. Thank you, Rhonda and Bob, and I'm very happy to appear for Al Hall. You'll fit into the picture beautifully, George. Here we are. I'm a duchess, and you're a count. Rhonda, please. I'm no count. I'm a director. All right, you're a no-account director. (laughs) Okay, you're a discounted actor. (laughs) I'm also a straight man for you. You know that, don't you? (laughs) You know, the way you boys talk, people will think you're not good friends. Oh, Bob and I understand each other. We make pictures and play golf together. Yeah, some deal. I'd get the long shots in the studio, and he'd get them on the golf course. (laughs) Well, that doesn't happen anymore. Did you beat him, Bob? No, I quit playing with him. But if you want me for another picture, George, take me. I'm yours. Uh, I'll take Rhonda. I mean, I'll take both. (laughs) (laughs) Good night, Rhonda. Good night, Bob. Good night, everyone. Good night. Great Lover was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose forthcoming production is The Mating Season, starring Gene Tierney and John Lund. Rhonda Fleming can currently be seen in the Paramount picture The Redhead and the Cowboy, co-starring with Glenn Ford and Edmund O'Brien. Chesterfield's own Bob Hope may be heard on most of these stations on Tuesday, and Bob Hope's newest picture for Paramount, soon to be released nationally, is Damon Runyon's The Lemon Drop Kid. Co-starring Lloyd Nolan, Marilyn Maxwell, and Jane Darwell with a lot of guys and gals. George Marshall has just completed a new comedy entitled No Room for the Groom. Starring Fred McMurray, Eleanor Parker, and Richard Carlson for 20th Century Fox. Included in tonight's cast were Fritz Feld, Paul Fries, Jim Backus, Sheldon Leonard, and Pinto Calvi. Walter Tetley, who played the part of Stanley, can be heard Wednesday on The Great Gildersleeve and Sunday on the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. The Great Lover was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Carn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen next week when we present Next Time We Love, starring Academy Award nominees Jimmy Stewart and Eleanor Parker with Screen Director E.H. Griffith. Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Saturday, hear the first piano quartet at a new time on NBC. NBC.